You are listening to the MSG podcast, Movies with Sarah and Garrison, and you're listening to um, our discussion on episodes 7, 8, and 9 of My Hero Academia. Sarah, what were your first impressions watching these three episodes? Uh, Well, it's just now getting good. Um, They really showed a lot of the other students' powers. They introduced some more students. And so you get to see a lot of action in the next episodes. You were not lying last week when you said Link gets better. So Mm. I'm really excited because they kind of left out a really good cliffhanger. Episode Mm. 9. So that's my my, um, impression. But there's a lot of questions. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, um, these three episodes left off with a pretty good cliffhanger and it sort of made it like sort of builds anticipation for next week when we watch the final episodes of uh season one right so there's 13 episodes in season one right yeah okay so that means that next week you have four episodes to watch we'll be reviewed well yep then is that when we do our quiz it is Uh oh okay uh we have not decided what we will being mainly me what i will being if i fail so we'll figure that out try and see if i can get some natto i've been wanting to like try that on the show okay so it's okay we'll have to go to like jungle gyms and Mm -hmm. get some of that all right so episode seven episode seven um the synopsis for that was basic plot points were um the continuation from episode six with the uh two on two hero versus villains um uh midoriya and bakugo knew each other from childhood i'm not sure if, if that was stated in a previous episode but it was clarified here mm-hmm. and we see that uh bago was praised ever since he learned that he had a cork yeah he let his ego slip real high real quick and and even the adults like they were saying you're so cool and stuff uh curious to to see how like teachers, like teachers of like uh, young kids, like kindergarten for second, third grade, treat their students. Like, do they like play oh, favorites yeah. like that? You mean like in real life or yeah. in this universe? In real life. Oh, yeah, I'm positive they do. They're like, oh, my favorite student speaks Spanish. Yeah, that's not a good a good idea. I don't think that's no. That's that's like setting terrible. them up. Yeah. Um, but I. It's not in the end of this episode that this happened, but they're kind of setting it up to where Bakugo and Mid- Midoriya might end up being like villain versus hero thing. That's where that's the vibe I'm getting at. Is Bakugo like kind of a bit of a crybaby? I want to say he's a softy, but kind of dumb, a dumb guy. Both dumb. But he goes like way dumber. I keep keep a note on that because I wrote that in my notes. And I want to bring that back up. Okay. But, um, yeah, so Midoriya is, like, a really great at analysis and applying that analysis into his strategies. Because um, we've seen throughout these series that he, like, writes notes down on, on heroes and stuff. So Right, yeah. So he's really good at research, making sure that he's his enemy's strength. Pretty smart, honestly. Bakugo could never dream of being that smart. He's more of like a, a head-on kind of person versus Midoriya's like strategic. And I wouldn't even fault Bakugo for that because um, a very pop popular expression is uh, best defense is a good offense. Mm-hmm. So he's just you know constantly attacking. So that can serve as as a as a strength for him. Right. Yeah. He, he's just got like the tenacity and the stamina just to like go until he can't anymore but we haven't seen that limit yet uh one thing that that's like kind of weird and maybe they'll mention it later but um so earlier in the series it was established that like 70 percent have corks but it seems like midoriya is like the only one in class without one when statistically at least like one or two other people right shouldn't be You're the alone only one up yeah. in there that's, that's a good point yeah. um all right so yeah back to what you were saying about the foreshadowing like yes yeah, so so i do kind of think that there's foreshadowing there because mm-hmm. you know the, the whole hero team versus the villain team mm-hmm. and bakugo is on the villain team midoriya is on the hero team yeah. like they really <laughs> set it up pretty darn early in this series which is good and i hope that they don't do that because that's kind of the expected predictable route to go 
guess, yeah. Um, but if Bakugo finally gets over his giant ego, he'll like ba- make Midoriya his rather than his enemy. Right, and they do choose to to for Bakugo to become a villain. But it's not like it comes out of nowhere because they've been setting it up, sort of. But it would still also make sense at this point for him to uh, rehabilitate. And that's not uh, re establish. Um, uh, re re rehab re re rehab rehabit rehabilitate rehabilit. I, I don't know. <laughs> he'll he'll recover or something. Um, from his he'll learn the so, error of his ways. There right. we go. Yeah. Um, we talk about Midoriya's gross arms. <laughs> I don't know why, but they look like they're seriously just like burnt afterwards, like mm-hmm. after he uses his power or his quirk. Mm-hmm. And I just like get really grossed out, honestly. <laughs> I, I, I'm sure that they probably thought of multiple ways that they could illustrate the fact that his <laughs> entire arms or whatever are broken, but they look like they've been shriveled up, mm. like all the blood and they're like sucked out of it and just like. <laughs> No more. Okay, would you rather have just like a purpley raisin arm or <laughs> or, or um or his arm be turned 90 degrees? Like I think I'd much worse? rather that one because then there's like no just looks different. Not like I don't know. I know that's a really bad description of no. This looks gross. Like I can't help it. I'd probably be okay with it being like, oh, my elbow is complete opposite way now because mm. then it would be funnier. You're really trying to get serious like Midoriya's arm is like fucked up um yeah you, you don't want to want to keep breaking your arms that's really unfortunate but yeah back to Bakugo, Bakugo the whole Bakugo thing uh he let off that large explosion that could have killed him and and um even though All Might said that that he had no intention of, of killing him he it's lucky that that they have a nurse there that can heal injuries because you know he's he was he he was uh really reckless and careless um, in the in the fight. Oh yeah, you're talking about uh revive girl, recovery girl. Recovery girl, yeah. 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 I mean, thank goodness they have like a nurse that can basically just like heal everybody. You kind of feel, you know, since she's kind of old that that she'll die and they won't have they they won't be able to rely on her. I had not as, thought at some of point. that. Yeah. Not yet anyway. Now I do. I'm scared for you has got to be with that kind of power similar um i was sort of thinking about this during fight but uh Uraraka, like her her costume I, I would imagine that that it would be useful to have like some sort of object or item on there that that you can pull off and like l- levitate with, like some sort of net or or, or like uh that's not a bad idea like yeah um accessorize I don't know. Her boots were those are my favorite part about her whole costume. Her helmet. I don't know. They they just did a really good job designing her costume. Yeah. Uh, something that I learned recently, like um, there's like a, a Marvel MHA crossover kind of thing hmm. happening. Hmm. Yeah, so that should be interesting. Into that one. Yeah. So w- what I've noticed is that one of Midoriya's weaknesses is that during that that fight, he was saying that. Bakugo was attacking him uh, so uh, so um, vigorously, I guess, and he couldn't think of a strategy. So he sort of so a drawback to him is that he needs time to formulate a strategy, and he won't always have time. So mm-hmm. so I think that's something that he'll have to work on. Be smarter, be braver in the moment. Yeah. Right. Yeah, because like it's like he's so in his head all the time what to and like he's got this like moral you know like battle that's going on in his head like why is everyone doing this to me i don't get it and baka goes like the complete opposite like nothing's going on up in there <laughs> <laughs> he's just like go 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 all the time can't really slow down i guess well uh a few of the students did sort of mention that the way Bakugo was using his quirk is that it did take some sort of skill and precision to calculate. Mm-hmm. So, but is that just because he's had his quirk for years, so he's had time to to master it, or 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 is he like really that good in the moment? I'm gonna leave it at the mastering kind of thing mm-hmm. because you know when you ever you start out like a martial arts, like you're just kind of hitting and kicking thing about it's going necessarily you're just throwing the punch um after years of throwing punches eventually you're like oh is this my advantage and it like dawns like oh i'm a cool person now <laughs> i don't know 
that's how I imagine people that practice martial arts. Hmm. Interesting. Um, at all that I had for episode seven, um, my my thoughts um, definitely move the plot along while also there was some character development going on there. Um, I think that's one thing that this show does well. And if this is your first time listening, uh, I have um, caught up with the series. Series. I have not started season three yet. And I'll go in that blind, so I'll, I'll uh, yeah. But um, yeah. What this series does well is is that they'll, they'll like weave in character growth moments with the plot, so the plot is grow is is progressing while the characters grow. And I think you know some anime uh, have a problem of like stopping the story just to like give some give some character exposition or something, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's all those internal monologues going on. Mm-hmm. And even, like, the there there's, like, certain scenes that they'll go through where it's, like, explanation of what just happened. You know, the scene moved on to something else. I think that's pretty interesting. They, they move the story on pretty darn quickly. Um, well, also, I think the essence and the feeling of what the story is really all about, which is, like, family of fun and freedom and... I don't, I don't know. That's a bit... <laughs> um, it's basically, like... The best you can be yourself, I guess. Uh, yeah, it, I think uh, as you'll learn, especially in season two, is that each character has like a thing, a personal goal that they're trying to attain, and and uh, I guess it just it's uh, it's about hard work. Yes. Yeah, but what you mentioned earlier about the story moving quickly, um, I think that's a pretty good skill to have when writing a story that. The, the author is creating a beginning, middle, and end, and it feels like, you know, it, it doesn't feel rushed, and you wouldn't mind lingering there longer, but you're right. excited about what's coming next. Right, because it's time. a good feeling. Like, mm-hmm. it provides, like, a good feeling. And, and that's in each individual episode. That's not, like, necessarily as a whole, I don't think. Of course it does, but, like, ind- individual episode brings that same feeling mm-hmm. that you're talking about. But, yeah, like, on to episode eight, mm-hmm. like... I mean, they they end it with basically them talking about all the student teachers talking about like what happened in the fight, um, who who did what, who did best. Um, apparently, Ida is the VP of the entire battle between villains, heroes, Uka, Uko, and Midoriya. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep. Because Ida was a true villain, <laughs> he played that part. He got into it. He did. <laughs> Thank you, Ida. I think watching this again, Ida's pretty. Like, he's a sort of serious character, but, but he's pretty funny, too. He's so cute. <laughs> I think he's my favorite of all of them. Like, Midoriya apart, Ruka apart, Aida's the cutest mm-hmm. of them all. Just bless his little heart. Um, and this is when uh, some of the other students enter into their battles. Mm-hmm. So you get to see their powers, too. Um, so, first up... We have uh, Shoji, the Dupla arms guy, that could that had like six he arms. Was creepy. <laughs> yeah. And like he like could I don't know like form different limbs mm-hmm. on each of his arms. Like it was just <laughs> so creepy. Yeah, I made a note of that too because I was like, uh. Uh-uh. If so, say you had that that power, uh, but you but like you didn't have the the arms per- permanently out, but each time you use your power, like arms came out of your like ribs or something. Would you want that? Or to, like, change the ends of your hands to no. different... No. No, I just want hands. Just give me hands. I mean, well, probably, I would hope that if... Okay, so, say, uh, hopefully, the character has, like, multiple, like, um, the ability to multitask, like, higher brain function. Yeah, otherwise, no, that would be it's awesome, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, cooking would be really easy. Mm, yeah, yeah. I don't know about driving. Well, you could probably, like, eat and drive if you wanted to. Right. And, like, he could form mouths and stuff, mm-hmm. mouths, eyeballs. You'd be, like, the ultimate predator if you were a hunter. Mm-hmm. Okay. But... Like, hearing things and, yeah. like, two arms for, like, a bow or something. And yeah. um, and next we have uh, Todoroki, the cold, half-hot guy. He's freaking dangerous. Dangerous? He's dangerous. Dangerous. Not the song. What? I think I know. What, what song is that? It's, it sounds familiar. It's, it's, the, it's the beat. I don't oh, know no, no, no. Words. Okay. I'm I'm thinking of um, that Cindy Lauper song. I think that's by her. Uh, Let's get physical. That's what Let's it's. Let's get physical. <laughs> that's what it sort of sounded like. But anyway, <laughs> it's like he froze the the entire building. It took like five seconds. Mm-hmm. He said, "Nope, it's already done." 
It's done. This whole this whole battle is done. Yeah. Second. One move that was that was really really strong and also during this fight we have the invisible girl and a tail guy. Mm -hmm. Um right, so more about Todoroki, um who go who we'll learn in the next episode is intimidated by him. Um so I'm interested to see if there's anything that'll will come up from that. I hope it does. Mm. Hope it just simmers out. Well, because like Bakugo's like whole thing, right? It's like all about heat. But then Todoroku is like got that cold. So you met your rival all there. It's hmm. cold and hot. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um. Right. So he, uh, Todoroki, and Yayarozu were admitted on recommendation. So, um, they are skilled. They're they're smart, and they have unique and powerful abilities. Um. But was Bakugo admitted on recommendation? Did oh. they say that? No. no. They... And right, so some of the uh, other students that we see is a bird head guy. Mm hmm. Have uh, the ear jack girl with like the little. Ear yeah, things. she got like earbuds. Mm -hmm. They're like earbuds, but they're actually her ears. She's mm -hmm. like really close. Um, and then we met Sue. We met her. Um, some other characters. Uh, the electric guy for a second. The rock hand guy. Mm -hmm. So we're getting there. We're we're slowly uh, learning more of the students but meantime we have all might he he explains to the nurse recovery girl that it's important for his secret to stay a secret and you you wanted to to like bring up something like a question about yeah um i was kind of mad towards the end of this episode because in oh yeah that's right midoriya decides that Bakugo needs to know about his powers. Why? Why does they? Why? I I don't get it. Of course, it's got to do with the story. I already know that. But no, if you know who these are, which clearly Bakugo has been bullying Midoriya since he was a kid. Why the hell would you? That, that made me really mad. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Midoriya is really patient because, like, he like Bakugo kind of hates him. He he does. <laughs> and and to tell him his secret is is is, is, is idiotic really just dumb um so that's how the episode ended but luckily bakugo didn't didn't um believe him yeah but didn't believe him both dumb hmm. now do you think that this has like long-term consequences like like midoriya will do something to make bakugo like re rethink maybe his power was given to him mm-hmm mm -hmm. I mean, not to, like, bringing up the next episode already, but people are already starting to make the connections between All Might mm -hmm. and Midoriya. Like, oh, Sue specifically mm -hmm. is like, well, you know, I just wanted to bring this up. It's pretty obvious that and All Might have so many powers. And it's like, uh, no, I, I, I didn't even notice. <laughs> That's just, must be just a coincidence. Uh, I don't, I can't remember the red hair guy. Uh, Kirishima. Kirishima, the rock hand guy. Yeah. But Midoriya gets wounded every mm -hmm. single time. It can't yeah. be him. It can't be the same power. Right. Yeah. Would Would you... So the uh, all for for one... No. Uh, one, yeah. No, it's... it's uh, one for all. The, the, yeah, the one for all. Um, say that there was a similar power as Midoriya's where each time you use it, you, you would break your arm. Do you want that? Oh, especially now that late in the game. Late in the game, what do you mean? Like, he, Midoriya, didn't get his quirk until it was like, oh, you're now at the age that you can go into Hero Academy, but you don't have a quirk. And here's your quirk, you have to figure it out. While it's an amazing quirk, we really haven't seen All Might's full capabilities. He's mm -hmm. like the, the superhero-esque, or like, Superman. super, <laughs> Superman-esque kind of character in this story. We still don't know all of his powers. He can fly. What else can Midoriya does? Does he? I don't know. He's the record record keeper he's the record i mean because he keeps records right. on all his oh. heroes mm -hmm. so he probably knows all of all its powers but you know maybe that's that's all maybe that that's is like super strength is his... super, super fly yeah well he, he really doesn't have like flight like he just like jumps like oh jumps, uh, leaps a building in a single bound kind of thing super jump yeah but even so uh kind of thought thought about this recently but even though it seems like only super strength and, and you know, speed and stuff his a application of it is useful like um like uh like him like 
All Might punching the air to like create this like wind mm -hmm. thing and stuff you'll see in the future. But it's pretty flex. It's fairly flexible. Okay. Yeah. Um, Take your word for that one. That was episode eight. That was episode eight. Episode nine. We're finishing this off with episode nine this week, and we start off with like. Yes, yes. So we we mentioned that um, someone could probably just jump over this the school gate, but someone did something better. They 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 burnt it down. Yeah, they yeah they crumbled it up or something. So yeah, there was like a huge security breach while they were trying to have a class representative election for to represent the class one A. Mm -hmm. um, Midoriya won the vote, right? Right, and, and then uh, Yaya Rozu. Yeah, your Rosu. Uh, yeah, got second place. So I think she might be president or something. I don't know. Um, right, and was Midoriya like excited about that or was he kind of like nervous? No, like, he, was, he did not want that. He was surprised. Um, we also learn about his family. Like he has a really popular, Prestigious. Yeah, yeah, rich family. And he has an older brother um, whose hero name is Ingenium. And he has like sixty-five sidekicks. I don't know how you have that many. You could probably like at, like have them do most of of your stuff. Just mm -hmm. like sit back, I guess. Right. Get easy. How do you get? Paid? I want to say that they they mentioned that, but I'm I don't remember. Remember, but maybe it's like on contract. With yeah, because they mentioned later in, in this episode is that you know how da how dangerous the powers are and that their powers are regulated and mm, that's interesting we'll find yeah. out um but after the whole like an ominous figure that's kind of shown of this episode kind of explains how the press got into the school but after that security breach everyone's like oh okay this has happened and then the students and the teachers all go to another building for another exercise and there happens to be another hero there whose name is space hero 13 which in my opinion resembles big hero 6 max yeah yes but before that we um when the news were uh, storming into UA, the students were crowded into this small hallway, mm -hmm. so Ida had to step up, and that sort of uh, solidified his position as the new class rep. Um, he earned it. Yeah, he he definitely leading up to this episode. And he wanted he, it. Yeah, yeah. He definitely established, um, showcased some of those leader-like traits. So. What a cutie. So adorable. Also, Might is growing weaker he said that after he gave his power to doria is that his powers have been um going way quicker um that that might will lose all of his power at some point and and have to leave everything up to doria i'm kind of thinking that might be like a season finale and kind it's of. like all might's already showing that he's he didn't show up to his last um, exercise the usj simulation joint that's such a random <laughs> random name oh uh, there's a bunch of different types of simulator students uh, to participate uh, universal in. studios japan <laughs> yes to uh pair them for natural disasters and whatnot he did not show up because he was not feeling himself i kind of felt bad when aizawa the teacher said that uh he's like what do you say he said uh he called uh, all might unreliable or something and mm -hmm. that kind of like made my like heart sink because you know he's all might's going through some stuff you know and he hasn't really told anyone so that's kind of the like one of the things that i think like makes like spider-man such a relatable character that you know, he has such a great burden but he can't tell anyone yeah spider-man are we talking about spider -Man? yeah because yeah like he has so much stuff on his plate and he can't really tell anyone right being a superhero yes yeah, sort of same goes with all might how especially now that that he's getting weaker he can't really tell anyone i imagine one of the reasons why he doesn't want to tell anyone it's not that he doesn't trust his fellow heroes that people with like like maybe like a memory stealing quirk or, or like a brainwashing quirk they could easily get that information like Take advantage yeah yeah of it. it's not very fair uh, being a superhero, it's not, not an easy job, guys. Don't be a superhero unless you're getting paid good. What you mentioned in when we were watching this, you were you had a question, remember? I don't remember. Like, like what? Like, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, now I do remember. Okay, so they they kind of express in this episode 9 that All Might 
knows that Midoriya told Bakugo about his powers, but he's not mad about it. He explains to Midoriya, or to Recovery Girl, that no one can know about it because if they know about Midoriya's powers, they'll come, the bunch of villains will come after him. I think it is like, so if somebody just comes up and takes a bite out of, I don't know, Midoriya's or All Might's hair or eats a fingernail, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. What have you, your mind can go places if it wants to. He takes a bite out of them. Do they automatically get a one for all power quirk that happened? Does it spread like herpes? Is that how mm. that works? Can all my, I don't know. Well, I'll give you two options. Now, there has been explained. It. I don't really think it's spoilery um, because it's really just sort of like briefly mentioned later on. But uh, do you want to know now or? No. Don't tell me. Okay. You can tell them. Uh, I'll close my no, ears. No, no, okay. I guess. Okay. No spoilery. But on the trip to the USJ, I really liked the interaction with like the, the students on the bus. That was really fun. Right. Um, yeah, Like you mentioned, uh, Asui was like, she quickly caught on to Midoriya. She's smart. She's a smart girl. Yeah. Um, yeah, she's probably one of my favorite characters. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and Bakugo was pissed again <laughs> yeah easy, easy. calm down right. rock go and now we can bring up big hero six. yeah big hero six um <laughs> space hero team the quirk black hole um she can or it can suck anything up and turn it in, into dust that's pretty powerful pretty cool right um yeah so space hero 13 de- uh developed this usj for as you said, um, natural disasters and uh, things like that. But um, the training is quickly interrupted by the villains coming in. Uh, Try not to give it away to spoilers, but there's the end of that episode. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, it basically ends with like all the villains and then the teachers is like, this is not an exercise. Yeah. And and uh, when the teachers were, you know, earlier in the episode, when the teachers were were trying to, to figure out how the front gate crumbled or you know it was messed up the hand guy was like standing in the shadows and now oh at, was he at the end of this oh, yeah was that him because yeah. i know i knew i saw somebody but i wasn't like yeah. character um what do you think about the hand guy like do you can you think of what his quirk might be or throwing hands okay that's your guess that's my guess <laughs> <laughs> so we'll find out next week on yes. um on this uh msg podcast um do you have any final thoughts words no i'm excited though um otherwise please don't forget to comment your thoughts if you guys want to watch this with us love to watch it with a live cast with it someday um share yeah like comment subscribe uh give us some suggestions for future content we we're thinking about like doing daily something daily or like every other day at least give us some uh some uh not comments um, pointers n- no no uh suggestions there we go yeah. give us some suggestions we'll, we'll hear them out um anyway uh we'll catch you next week for episodes um nine no ten and eleven and twelve and thirteen thanks for listening once again to the msg podcast movies with sarah and garrison